Marriage and weddings. What do they really mean? Wedding is the ceremony of marriage. Simple, right? Marriage is the legal or formally recognized union of two people as partners in a partnership and personal relationship. But really, is that all it is? Love. When I first met Terry, I learned two things. She loved guns and animals. <laughs> she loves animals so much, as any time we dig in this yard, every earthworm was trauma alerted to safety. <laughs> the guns, we're going to leave that one alone. But she loves our country and the Constitution created by our forefathers. Soon there was a squeaky voice on the phone, which was always on speaker, and always demanding something of Terry. The conversation always started with the word love, referred to each other as love, and ended with the word love. I learned that love was Cherie. Years went by, but I never really physically met Sherry for quite some time. <laughs> but always before my massage, because I am a patient of Terry's, there was the squeaky voice. <laughs> I would chime in and say, hello, Cherie, and we would talk a little as I was interrupting on purpose. I felt left out. For some reason, I was not referred to as love, if you can imagine that. <laughs> One day, Tari told me that she was buying a house, and she asked if I could help her check them out for issues. Okay. The house had a few criteria, though. But one was the most important <laughs> criteria, was a bona fide cat room. <laughs> I had no idea how many cats she had, and I'm not allowed to tell you how many either. It's classified. There were many houses, and many had a lot to be desired. But then came this one, a little outside the budget, of course, and needed a few things. This one was perfect. You see, Waterfront was not on the list. But knowing Terry's love for the water and animals, this had to be. She had to get this house. So I made a commitment to Terry. You buy this house, you, we will fix it, get everything that it needs, and tailor it to what you want. We were already becoming friends. I was just a patient. And Terry began asking me things, how to fix this, how to fix that. I was soon realizing she was looking for someone to teach her the very skills I have amassed over the years. I was truly honored as no one even cared for it. The house was purchased and we hit the ground running. I now had the opportunity to meet Cherie and soon learned everything we did had to go executive approval from Cherie. Everything we have done would usually start while planning with a cave woman shoulder shrug when I asked her, what do we do here? And then calling across the yard into the house, love! <laughs> Again, the word love. Acceptance. First, big issue in the wall, a, a real big leak in the master bedroom, the shower between the closet. I had to open this wall. The water dripping from the shower body created the most suitable environment for cockroaches. Especially since the last owner left the house and it let it sit with low air conditioning and warm and moist. That is what they like. Apparently Sharia is terrified of cockroaches and the only thing she hated more was police officers. <laughs> I'm a retired police officer. <laughs> I was a cop at the time. I am exposing hundreds of cockroaches in plain sight. It was bad. 
I told Sherry, do not tell her. She will not sleep here if you do. Terry had to resist this urge because she tells love everything. I was retiring. I just finished my exterminator license. I had a plan. I was going to save Cherie from the cockroaches, and thereby she would realize that a police officer was not so bad, right? Right. Uh, right. Wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Always life will throw curves and cause havoc. Cherie and I were in the kitchen. I had treated the house for roaches. I had no idea what was wrong until I turned around because she was screaming. A roach was climbing from behind a picture on the wall, not two feet behind me, just over my left shoulder. I thought there was no coming back, but I pressed on. There were more return calls. I came eventually to evict the roaches that were taking this beautiful home. Eventually, through many pack projects and efforts, Cherie came to accept me as Terry's friend. She would make sure I ate something and always had something to drink on every project. But then suddenly, she called me Uncle Chuck. <laughs> the first time she said that, I was in shock. I went right past annoyance to the family and then Cherie adopted me. <laughs> next tells me, next Terry tells me about adopting Sonny. I responded, I don't know Terry, that's putting a lot on your plate. A soon to be teenager, you have a lot going on and that is a lot of responsibility. Cherie and Terry made up their minds. They were doing it. Then Terry tells me after explaining why, I was hoping you would be a positive male role model for her. That choked me up. I was verklempt. <laughs> you see, Terry knows how to get you. She sicks her, her attack dogs on you. Not Tinker and Pikachu. Love. Family. I'm really glad they did it. You see, that love was blossoming. They were already creating a family. I was so taken to be around observing this, frequently day to day, sharing this, and leading up to be in front of you now, sharing what you already know. Now they have two kids to raise, Sonny and Tony. <laughs> Where's my other boy in there? Where's my Chase in there? You're mine too. He's coming. They have, as I said, they have a classified number of cats. Tinkerbell and Pikachu. Some fish. And of course, the butterflies. Sonny, look at you. You came here very shy, very sensitive. Some of you may not know, Sunny jumped a big hurdle recently. She changed schools after the lockdown. She made new friends and, and overcame her desire to change out of a class in debate. It's a hard class. Debate looks awesome on a college resume. I advised her to stick with it. She had her first debate competition. She first decided somehow to get Terry to go along with a plan to have her get sick at around 11.30 to avoid it. I don't know if I could say this as an ordained minister. Terry's response, hell no! I'm sure Sonny was scared about the challenge, being in front of people, and maybe making a mistake. I mean, she is shy and sensitive, you know. I don't buy that. Guess what she did? She did great. Now we are all proud of her. Sonny, you are very special. You have all the tools now to be successful. 
and nothing can stop you. All I could say is keep making us proud. I soon to become included in family events. I got to meet Phil and Karen, and it wasn't long before we were working on totally unnecessary aerodynamic type attachments <laughs> on Phil's car. It's a Jersey and Miami thing. Okay? You see, you take a car that went through all sorts of engineers, wind tunnels from NASA, and then you go in a catalog, and by some miraculous way, you're going to do a better job by adding some spoilers and air damn crap that'll make it work better. But it looks cool. I'm just as guilty as Phil. I have done it myself. This required some drilling in the bottom of the spoil, pre-existing on the car. Spoiler's a little wing thing on the back. We were actually putting the spoiler onto the spoiler, if that makes sense. I complete I completed most of the holes and wanted to give Terry the opportunity to drill one. Little did I know, I was about to witness a horror. You see, Terry was only supposed to drill part way into the bottom of the spoiler. But Terry has two settings, on and off. She drilled right through the top of the spoiler. Now, there was a 3 8 inch hole surrounded by a finely polished orange Camaro. I mean, you could look at the whole car, but the eye would draw right to this hole, right in the middle. I saw shock and horror on both Terry's and Phil's faces. A tense moment. I expected World War III. So what did I do? I laughed. I laughed hard. It was funny. <laughs> I mean, it was funny for me, not so funny for Phil. Terry turned red with embarrassment, fear, and anguish. Phil did exactly as a father who loves his daughter would do best. Patience. Karen, after hearing the story, would just roll their eyes and remain quiet. That was her way of exercising her patience with Phil and that car. <laughs> You see, those things that we have of our male need to do things, Terry has referred this to dripping toxic masculinity. We tend to collect toys in order to create more toxic men masculinity. Every time I sat with Karen, she would reminisce about when Terry and Sheena were young all the stories she had told me were times of love. And when the girls were up to no good, patience. Sheena, you are so special to Terry. Although I have not had much opportunity to know you, I want you to know that you are as close as a sister as any sister can be. They are truly are the embodiment of sisterly love. With that said, I have heard stories of Terry yelling, Tayatoshi, and practicing her, her judo throws on you at will. <laughs> there came the patience. Tony and Donna, you have given so much of your time and energy preparing for this winning. Tony, while working the midnight shift, really came through for this wedding. 14 hours of pressure washing with the smallest pressure washer ever made. Endless <laughs> <laughs> hours of construction and manual labor to get things done and ready. By the way, Donna provided the smallest pressure washer in the world. <laughs> to Tony, that's why it, it took so long. I guess she was teaching him patience. Donna suffered every hiccup in preparation for this wedding. This gave her the opportunity for patience. By the way, every comment about the grass, that we were idiots, 
<laughs> or when the pergola was going to be built ever, gave me opportunities to exercise my patience. <laughs> If you're wondering about the grass, Terry and I sprayed for weeds about a month ago. My part lush and green on the edges. The rest is hers. <laughs> You'll well, remember that on and off thing? Kind of like that. I lost the track of her for a second. Yeah, yeah. She is not new to this, but she was tired. I got beat up for letting her spray her own yard. <laughs> Another opportunity to exercise patience. <clears throat> Cherie was mad, but eventually forgave and accepted the flaw. As for Donna, jury's still out. <laughs> Forgiveness. Cherie and Donna, I know you wanted everything perfect for this wedding. I am going to tell you there is no real such thing. Ask it anyone who has been married here or anywhere that there was not some kind of complete disaster in theirs. Love, in fact, we don't, we don't love each other because we are perfect. Love is the patience and acceptance of flaws. When we reminisce about things, what makes a story about love interesting is the conflicts and hurdles that were overcome. Cherie, you should know this. Any, any Hallmark, Hallmark Channel mm -hmm. story is not interesting because two people just fall in love and ha ha ha. There is a challenge somewhere to the relationship and the characters overcome love, the barrier through love, patience, and forgiveness. See, Terry and Cherie have been a couple a long time. 11 years! <laughs> she wanted me to make sure it was right. Each one completes the other. They came together, and it's all about love, acceptance, patience, family, and forgiveness. They really do all these things for each other in the truest and sincere form. They have conquered adversity. They have remained true, remained true to each other and their faith. This is what matters, not the quote, perfect wedding. The ceremony is just a validation of what was already and always there. Love is a feeling, and weddings are validation of that love, nothing more. What they are to each other is perfect. They love each other perfectly. The love they give to everyone here is perfect. You all have given back to that love, which is perfect. The love you give each other, again, is perfect. The departed. Tony, Donna, and Cherie, I know there is someone you don't see here today. A daughter, a sister, a confidant. Karen, Terry, and Sonny, I know there is someone you don't see here today. A mother, a sister, and an aunt. Terry and Cherie, I know there are close friends you don't see here today. We may be saddened to not see them here, but let me tell you something. They are here in spirit. We don't see God, but we know He is there. Your departed loved ones are with Him, and therefore they are here, because He is here. We will acknowledge their presence by calling their names. Marsha, Nikki, Wayne, Gabby, Grandpa Steve. They confer their love on this union and ask you not to mourn them, but accept their love and blessings on your union. Let us take a moment, listen to this very special place, your home, the trees, 
as the wind flows over them, the birds and the insects feel the presence of God's love, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Trinity and the Union, three into one. There's an offspring. There's not an offspring. Oh. <laughs> Tricolor herring. Yeah, no, you're, trying, you're trying with the birds. <laughs> this is the silent part. Shh. Let's take a moment of silence. God is here. Our beloved is here. And the Spirit is here. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we ask upon you to bless this gift of marriage to Teresita and Cherie. Bless their family and their home. We ask you to give them guidance and encouragement, strength and support, love and understanding. Our blessed Lord. Amen. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to celebrate the union of Teresita and Cherie. The gift of marriage is miraculous and this ceremony presents us with a wonderful opportunity shared between these souls to be observers to their love. A reading from Corinthians. Love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always preserves. Love never fails. The vows. Teresita Maria Acosta, do you take Cherie to be your wedded wife? I do. Hold on. Oh. <laughs> Not there yet. Hold each other's hands. Okay, I'll wait for the airplane. Okay. I'm going to start over. Okay. Teresita Maria Acosta, <laughs> do you take Cherie to be your wedded wife, to live together in marriage? Do you promise to love her, comfort her, honor and keep her for better or worse, for richer or poorer, in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others? Be faithful only to her from this day into the next. No, I say yeah. I do. Mm -hmm. Cherie Marie Gil Acosta, do you take Teresita to be your wedded wife, to live together in marriage? Do you promise to love her, comfort her, honor, and keep her for better or for worse, for richer or poorer, in sickness and in health? And forsaking all others, be faithful only unto her, from this day into the next. I do. The rings. <laughs> the exchanging of the rings is not only a custom, but a symbol for not only the love and devotion, but the circular shape of the ring evokes an unending commitment to each other. It is a symbol showing us that two have become one. It is a symbol and reminder of fidelity. You've already exchanged rings, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> we did that early. Yeah, no. you were a little early, but that's okay. <laughs> Sorry. By the power invested in me, by the Universal Life Church, oh, yes. and the state of Florida, I now pronounce you wife and wife. <laughs> you may kiss the bride. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my sheer honor to present to you Mrs. Teresita Maria Acosta, 
and Mrs. Cherie Marie Gillacosta. <laughs> Say congratulations. Oh, we missed that. Please. <laughs> Can you say congratulations? Congratulations. Yeah. Much happiness. But we've been together 43 years. Yeah. That's what I want for them. 43, yeah. yeah. You know, I want them to have a wonderful life, which they are. They found each other, you know. So uh, just invite me so when you guys go to the gun range, okay? That's it. <laughs> have patience, be kind, and everything works out in the end. Because God's in control of anything and everything. Good luck, and I'm so happy for you guys, and everything is going to work out perfectly. It's going to be amazing. Uh, I just want to say I'm happy for both of these two. They've been through a lot together. Um, they're great people. They're surrounded by greater people. And everybody have a great time. Thanks. Hey. All right. Hey. I just want to say... Of course, thank you for everyone for coming, even though this is not my wedding, but it's very important to me because it's my people's weddings. My people. Oh, yeah, that's what I call them. And um, I just really love them, and I'm just so happy to see them happy. So. Congratulations to these two. As they join their hands, they join forces in a union of love and patience and compassion and understanding. And we're all here tonight, today, tonight, it's gonna to turn dark in about an hour anyways, um, to welcome them into their new life of love and grace. Thank you all for being here, and I love both of you dearly. Oh, thank you. Congratulations. All right. Woo! Drink you guys. All right. <laughs> Um, first, thank you everybody for being here to join them on their special day and for everybody that helped make this wedding beautiful for them. Okay, um, if you guys do not know me yet, I'm Terry's sister. Okay. Woo! <laughs> so, so, I'm a little nervous about what I'm going to say. I prepared it kind of last minute, so bear with me. Um, 
But basically, <laughs> growing up, the best part about having a sister was that I always had a friend. Even though my friend would shave the head <laughs> oh of my, my favorite Barbies. Yep. Okay, I did. Forever. Ricky Lake episode. <laughs> so most little girls, as we know, grow up dreaming of their fa fairy tale wedding and becoming a bride. Oh. Terry the office. was too busy dreaming of becoming a baseball player, a sheriff, or Davy Crockett. <laughs> Complete with cool skin hat yep, and mustache. Yep, yep. Okay. Um, and then that being said, if you know Terry, you know how unique she is. She, she's been a special person with a heart of gold and a smile that can brighten anybody's day. Mm -hmm. And by the way, you make an even more beautiful bride than you would have dreamed. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, I'm Cherie. I'm so happy that she has found her perfect match in you. <laughs> um, you have accepted all of her unique quirks and characteristics, <laughs> and I think that a lot of them have rubbed off on you. <laughs> um, you have created such an amazing family together, and I'm so happy that I officially gained another sister after Aww. these long 11 years. <laughs> I wish you both a lifetime of happiness and love. So, cheers and let's drink to All right, cheers. All right, so today, as we are gathered here amongst our family and closest of friends, I stand before you speechless. I know a wordsmith of my caliber should have plenty to say, but it's hard when you feel words can't convey. I try in several ways, comparing you to a cloudless, sunny day, but those aren't particularly unique or as exquisite <laughs> as you. I gotta wait for the plane to fly, hold on. Ah! I tried to shoot Paparazzi is telling I, me I, I the plane gotta fly over first, okay? You don't have a bite, <laughs> Oh my god. Okay. Are you ready? All right. I can compare you to a favorite song and how I can play you over and over all day long. <laughs> It'll never feel any less joyful to my ears, but you know very well next month your favorite artist will release a new single and you'll be obsessed with that. <laughs> I could say if you were a destination, you'd be paradise. I see it every time I glance into your eyes. I like you like, I love you like a child loves to play, or as 50 once said, like a fat kid loves cake. <laughs> That's all I've written, but you are my anchor, you are my compliment. Uh, bad, good, good, bad. Uh, where you're strong, I'm weak. Where I'm weak, you're strong. And you're my yin to my yang. Oh! Yay! Oh, man. All right, Sheree, top down. Some time ago, when they first moved into the house, Terry used to stop in front of Sherry's window and she used to serenade her. Oh. You ever hear oh, Sherry? Really? You ever hear Terry sing? Yeah. Yeah. And she used to dogs sing, roll over. But no, she sang this song so well. I mean, really, really. And it goes something like this. <clears throat> Why is my heart so light? Why are the stars so bright? Why is the sky so blue? It is Santo. Since the hour I met you, the flowers are smiling bright. They're smiling for our delight. They're smiling so tenderly for the world, you and Sherry. I know that my world is smiling. It's smiling so tenderly, it is the same old story, all through eternity. Love, this is my song, here is a song, a serenade to you. The world, it cannot be wrong, if in this world there is you. I care not what the world may say, without your love there is no day. So love, this is my song, here is a song, a serenade to
It is beyond amazing. I could not have had this wedding without you. You deserve all the fucking credit. I mean credit. <laughs> because without you, this would not have happened, okay? Like, honestly, you the food is amazing. The flowers are amazing. Dealing with me, I don't know how you do it, but, yeah, that's why you're the mom. You are amazing, okay? girl. You just Thank keep you. Like smiling. Thank you. Living. I'm so happy you're here with us. Thank you so much for being part of all this. And Santos. Santos, thank Santos. you so much for cooking for us in the, during the wedding. We were like, hey, you okay? Like seriously, Tina Marie, thank you so much for taking my, my care of everything. Like you made Terry's like like fitting and everything just go such a breeze. Karen, thank you so much for being there and taking care of you know everything that needed to be taken care of. I just I want to thank you guys so much for being here. I can't tell you my best friends are here so it means the whole entire world to me that you guys showed up. And I love you so much. You mean everything to me. And my family, thank you so much for coming all the way out here. Cuz I miss you. All right. Thank you guys. Uncle Chuck, I really couldn't have done this without you. Okay? Your speech was everything to me. Thank you for being such a positive, positive, positive impact on our life. You're such a good role model for my kid. I appreciate it. Daddy, in my whole life, you never left me. You never let me go. No matter what I did, you always encouraged me. Not going to jail, he didn't come. But everything else, my dad was there, okay? I wouldn't be the woman I am today without my dad. I'd probably be somewhere else. So, Dad, thank you for keeping me in the right track. I love you. God thank God. you, guys. Oh. Oh, Uncle Joe, thank you for my cake. Thank you. Right. How about that cake, girl? Yeah, that one thing. Yeah, stand yeah. up for the cake. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Phil, thank you for raising such Wait, an amazing we... woman. I know. No, I know oh, she oh, did oh. it too. Trust me. I but know. thank you. She is literally a spitting image of you. <laughs> literally. Karen, I'm so, so, so happy she got your soft sides, okay? Because she needs them. She's a He's little a rough around too. the edges, okay? She's a softie too. Thank you, yes. I am so happy, yes. And Lourdes, thank you. Well, Terry, thank you so much for being here with us. I know! I was writing that on the card and I'm like, that's not her name! Thank you so much for sharing this and always being in our lives and being a positive role model on all my kids too because she loves you so much. Mm -hmm. And I'm so thankful that you're in our life. Aww. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing this moment. Thank you. I eat good. Always. Always. <laughs> Thank you guys. Next time we go out on the boat. I'm You're not right. driving. Oh, he almost I'm killed me on the boat. <laughs> I'm not even joking. That's another story. To be continued. That's part two. Part two.